Ich bin fast Good evening. Good evening, um, everybody. Um, my name is Jörg Haspel, and was I was the state conservationist uh, of Berlin for some years, and also president of e-commerce uh, Germany. Um, and uh, today I am the moderator who will take us through this uh, session. I would like to welcome you on the behalf of the organizers of. Thomas Lill and the foundation, uh, Max Lingner Foundation, and of uh, e-commerce Germany, uh, with uh, Tino Mago, who is the president of e-commerce Germany of the German National Committee. And I would like to welcome all of you here in the auditorium in the Max Lingner House, as well as in the screens worldwide or uh, abroad. I was asked to guide us today as a moderator through the second evening of the series of three evening seminars or evening workshops on what we call socialist modernism in Central and Eastern Europe. Like the evenings yesterday and the evening tomorrow, this Wednesday evening is also dedicated to the International Day of Monuments and Sites, which ECOMOS celebrates since 1982. This year, the title of this global uh, heritage conservation event is Heritage Changes. And that means that heritage has always to be adapted and reshaped for contemporary uses and functions and needs, and that it is part and that it contributes to social cultural changes as well. And we in Berlin, we have taken this uh, motto, uh, Heritage Changes, as an opportunity to discuss in depth the, a controversial uh, topic, the young heritage of socialist modernism in Central and Eastern Europe, as we is our that is our headline, um, or the heritage of modern times in Central and Eastern Europe. And in keeping with the spirit of an open and innovative and constructive intergenerational dialogue, the International Day of Monuments and Sites in 2023 aims to provide showcase strategies of heritage research as well as of heritage practices which deliver climate resilient and inclusive pathways to low carbon futures. That is the main aim of the International Day of Monuments and Sites. And maybe unlike yesterday and tomorrow, today's ev event is likely to raise and leave more questions than it can answer. An evening and a place where the heritage of socialist modernism in Ukraine and in the Russian Federation is to be presented and discussed together under the geographical and political umbrella term of Central and Eastern Europe as it is the case today in the Max Lingner House, that seems a little bit out of time. Um, some may say it is inappropriate and even outrageous, well, some will think. This is not altered by the fact that the first ideas for a cross-border lecture and discussion series of the legacy with Dimitri Buzu, uh, that it date back years. It took pl a place or st the starting point was uh, from the first volume, which were produced in the 2018 about Moldavia and Romania, and uh, one year later the German album followed. This was years ago. And the albums of Ukraine and the Russian Federation, which are focusing to we are focusing today, they were already on print or uh, on sale when Russia attacked Ukraine on the 24th of February last year bringing death and destruction to millions of people, as well as devastation and destruction to the country, its infrastructure, its cultural, and its nature in, war, uh, in a war of aggression that violates international law. On the anniversary of the invasion of Ukraine by Russian troops uh, in Germany, many commemorative and solidarity activities took place everywhere in the country at the end of February. 
and uh, in Berlin, the cultural and political event was Cafe Kiev, We Choose Freedom. And I think it probably attracted uh, most people to a, a place, and this was due to the, to a great part, it was due to the site where this took place. This was the Cafe Moscow on the Karl Marx Allee, a protected architectural monument of modern movement of the late 60s, an icon of what we call East Modernism and a part of the Berlin's World Heritage application. Uh, yesterday we started in front of Cafe Moscow, uh, in front of the Kino International, and on the opposite side there was yeah, Cafe Moscow created by uh, Josef Kaiser and Helmut Bauer with the Heller uh, 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 mosaic. In a contemporary artistic action, the organizers had renamed the legendary uh, location in Cafe Kiev, and inside event rooms were given names like uh, the cities of Ukraine, Kiev, Kharkiv, Kherson, Lviv, Odessa, Sabrishia, etc. And the organizers explained that they wanted to send, that is a quotation, that to send a signal by changing the names of the anniversary. We are thus showing that Kiev is closer to us than Moscow in geographic and in political terms. And thousands of visitors flooded into Cafe Kiev, alias Cafe Moscow, on this weekend to learn about the current situation in Ukraine through video clips, augmented reality installations, or discussions. And again and again, the photos, the films of the Russian armed forces' work of destruction <coughs> and devastation took the center stage. Ruins, rubbles, fragments of large settlements of socialist modernism and mass housing estates will not leave visitors' mind, and not to forget the immense reconstruction efforts and costs that this war will require. Today, we want to continue yesterday's discussion using Ukraine. and Russia as an example, historical and cultural interest and significance. And we should not lose sight of the social value that is being discussed throughout Europe for ecological reasons and for the reorientation of the building industry in a resource conscious and energy efficient way. And we should discuss this topic always keeping in mind the disturbing images of war damaged cities and heritage sites in Ukraine. Built testimonies of socialist modernism are only rarely registered as legal monuments in the lists of the state authorities. Yesterday we learned that, for example, in Bulgaria there were four post-war heritage sites listed. <coughs> this was Dimitrovgrad, as you can call it, a socialist company town or a industrial town. This was Buzlucha, this was uh, the bell tower in Sofia, and uh, the Schumann uh, Memorial. But it is also true that quantitatively, the buildings and structures built between the end of Second World War and the opening of the Iron Curtain make a very large part of the surviving building volume in many cities and regions of Europe, and that they re represent an immense social and cultural and economic challenge for all of us. The Socialist Modernism Project, which Dumitru Rusu initiated and put for discussion on behalf of Baku today, is part of a growing interest in the legacy of the recent past, not only in Central and Eastern Europe, but Europe-wide or also worldwide, including Asia. The photo albums of Baku are, so to speak, partial contributions to a kind of work in progress. They can be updated by self-publishing through expanded to uh, editions, they can be supplemented geographically and thematically with new release. And seen in this way, it's an open publication system with, with image and reading material that invites us to participate and to contribute in the same time. And um, we have to consider that not only books are the result and instrument, 
but also the digital maps and websites, which are much more frequented than books are sold and bought. And of course, we also could ask ourselves, should the photo album of worth seeing destinations in Ukraine be completed, for example, in this case, or linked to an inventory of damaged and destroyed buildings and heritage sites in Ukraine? The Baku Group, the Bureau for Art and Urban Research, and Dumitro Rusel define themselves as an association for conservation and of urban and cultural rehabilitation. The first volume was published in 2018, as already mentioned, and since then, uh, I think about a dozen books um, have been uh, issued, including photo anthologies on Ukraine and the Russian Federation on Ukraine in 21 and Ukraine in 22. The albums of the Balkan region and the Baltic states took central stage yesterday. The recent volume on Ukraine and the Russian Federation follow today. And tomorrow there is the final meeting which will close with the presentation and discussion of the album on socialist modernism um, in Germany, that is the former GDR. And I'm very happy that uh, Mrs. Agerman is with us. She's one of the speakers of the National Committee of 20th Century and tomorrow she will also participate in this uh, panel discussion. The long-term Baku project is accompanied and supported by interactively expandable web platform socialist modernism. And this is also includes an interactive map of all objects documented online on the website. And there are also, which I would like to mention and to show, handy fold out maps uh, which have been published for a number of cities and regions like, for example, here for Berlin and uh, Potsdam, which are very um, handy and very informative to give a short orientation and information. And I only missed a map, <coughs> for example, of Kiev for Lviv for uh, some of these cities as well to provide this kind of information. The Bureau of Art and Urban Research, Baku, is represented tonight by Dumitro Rusu. He is the speaker, the spokesman of Baku, and like the Socialist and Heritage Initiative, he is based in Moldavia as well as in Romania. He did his bachelor's degree in architecture and his master's degree in heritage conservation uh, in Romania and is currently presenting his doctoral thesis on the heritage of socialist Soviet Republic of Moldavia from 1945, that means from the beginning of the Soviet Republic to the end in 1991 in Now, He is ECOMOS member in Moldavia and Romania and he is member of the Presidium of ECOMOS Scientific Committee on 20th Century and we look forward to his report and to his perspective which is very urgent in these days and maybe also in this audience. Uh, because we, we mentioned yesterday and in the morning, uh, Anna Bronoyetskaya also mentioned uh, the books of uh, Besager, of Chauvin, of Campenas, of, uh, of uh, German, Slovenian, uh, uh, French, uh, uh, Belgian authors. These books of Dimitri, they are not about Central and Eastern Europe, they are from and for Central Europe. And it's it's for the Central and Eastern Europe, and I hope that it is also for this local and regional community. From the, so it is uh, of importance for us, and I am pleased to announce together with the main speaker of this evening, a whole series of experts from Ukraine and Russia. Some have contributed to the Baku uh, project, Socialist Modernism, and others have uh, expressed their readiness to complement the lecture with additional comments and statements. And despite the adverse circumstances I mentioned at the beginning, this evening does not remain a one-man show reporting on Russia and Ukraine from Romania and Moldavia, but experts from both countries will contribute their uh, point of view. And I'm really very happy, uh, together with Thomas Dill, that we succeeded to host you here, that eight colleagues have joined our meeting here to share their experience and perspective, either online or even in presence here in Berlin. And please join me in extending a warm welcome 
first of all to Vital Chulyar, who is now with us in Lviv in Ukraine. He is the author of the introduction of the Ukraine volume, uh, and he will follow the presentation uh, of Dumitru with a starting comment from his point of view. He's an architect and urban planner who did this kind of introduction. And secondly, I would like to welcome Anna Bronovitskaya. She is from Russia. Uh, she's based in, in Moscow, was based in Moscow, um, came today from, or yesterday from uh, Munich, or from Erevan she came, and is an expert on 20th century heritage with numerous research books and publications and actions on modern architecture and art since years. Uh, she also produced architectural guides to modern movement in Moscow, St. Petersburg, and in Alma Ata, and now she is preparing the Erevan uh, volume. I would like to welcome very heartily and cordially Pavlov Kravchuk. He is a conservationist of Zaporizhia. He graduated in history, and since 2014, <laughs> he is employed as a specialist in the city's department of culture and tourism. He is the creative director of the digital portal Zaporizhia Heritage, and he is a coordinator of a program for protecting cultural and historical monuments of Zaporizhia city. And I think it is one of the most remarkable, if not risky, heritage conservation jobs he does Europe-wide in Zaporizhia. And so we are very glad, happy that you are here with us. Uh, welcome, Karli Yavenya Molya from Ukraine. She is an art historian from Kiev, worked recently, I think, in the Bibliotheca Herziana in Rome uh, with Max Planck Institute. She is an internationally recognized expert in the field of mosaics, in Ukraine, curated art projects about preserving Soviet heritage in different aspects. One of them is the large exhibition and trade fair area um, in Kiev, which is a little bit similar to the thing in Moscow. And since 2015, she is active in the self-organized art initiative DNED, what means where, not where, and is focusing on art and public space in remote areas and in small and medium um, towns. And I think this is very uh, important. And since the 1st of April, you are here in Berlin and joined the research training group of identity and heritage at the Technical University. Maybe you, uh, may I ask you also to present yourself because of the camera, then people who are in uh, online with us, they know who is represented and presented here. Ah, yes. <laughs> Okay. We, yes, yes, and then you, you, of course, and then you have the, the chance, of course, to present your, yourself. <coughs> uh, then I would like to welcome Oksana Gorinovich. Some of you know her already because she is an architect and art historian based or coming from Minsk, but working and studying and doing her PhD here in, uh, in Berlin. Uh, she's uh, the senior researcher at Technical University Aachen today in the project of Stadtkultur uh, and Bauen and was a curator of, let's call them, comparative uh, exhibitions on Belarus uh, and Germany in different, um, on different levels. And she, she's a member of the Society of Architectural Historians and she's a member of ECOMOS Belarus, which has, it's not the first, I think, but it has spread over in all countries abroad of Belarus. And I would like to welcome Michael Ilchenko, who is from Yekaterinburg. He did his studies in history and culture at Eastern Europe, and now he is uh, in, in Leipzig at the DWZO. Uh, he studied in Yekaterinburg, did uh, have a graduated as PhD in the Russian Academy of Science, and he is focusing on various aspects of urban transformation in Eastern Europe and his recent book publication where he was co-editor and co-author uh, was Post-Utopian Spaces Transforming and Re-Evaluating Urban Icons of Socialist Modernism. Um, currently, he is involved, like Oksana, in the re joint research project Stadt Kultur Bauen um, on cultural heritage of construction in post-Soviet urban development. And I would like to 
present Svetlana Smolenska, who is a professor and lecturer at state and private universities in Kharkiv. She graduated in architecture and history of architecture in Lviv, in Moscow, and in Kharkiv. Um, she's a member of e-commerce Ukraine and the International Scientific Committee, and she's also a member of the journalists uh, of Ukraine. And her last exhibitions and publications was on Svoboda Square uh, Ensemble in Kharkiv, which was presented here in Berlin. And she also contributed to the um, to the summary or to the anthology of Dokumomo on the situation, multiple modernism in Ukraine, which was produced and published uh, in, in the winter time with a project or with an article on the he heroic period of Ukraine modernism, 1920s, 30s. And since uh, last summer, she is has a research scholarship from Volkswagen Foundation, and she presented this morning already the uh, the Sharkiv Theatre competition of 1931. And we have a surprising guest, a last guest, an additional guest, that is Simon Schickhau-Wern from Ukraine. He studied and graduated um, in uh, computer engineering, but he is focusing and his research uh, center is interwar and postwar modernism and the Stalinist, or including the Stalinist neoclassical architecture. Uh, so he's focusing on legacy of Soviet times. He's author of nearly 20 books and multiple architecture, and he is an architectural activist in heritage protection and author and curator of publications and exhibitions on modern heritage in Ukraine. And he, is, uh, uh, he will become affiliated to the GDSO uh, in, in Leipzig, and that is the reason why we were able to invite him and to include him in this discussion. We are very grateful. Thank you for coming. Thank you very much for your audience, uh, for your uh, attention. And I would like to uh, ask Dimitri Brusel to take the floor and to present the two books on U Russia and Ukraine. Thank you. Thank you, York, for the introduction. Okay. Today's, uh, hello, everyone. Today is the second day of the workshop. Uh, we will focus more on. Um, uh, Ukraine and uh, Russia version of the books, and we will start with a short presentation of of the socialist modernism as a concept or as a period, and we will present also the uh, uh, the platform, uh, so it which is connected to the books, and also the series of the book in which we will uh, focus more on the Ukraine and, and Russia. The architecture of uh, the socialist period, and more precisely the modernist tendencies between 1955 and 1991 as a concept are becoming more and more popular in especially circles. In our case, socialist modernism <coughs> is a research platform created by uh, the BACU Association, Baku, focusing on the dos modernist trends from Central and Eastern Europe, which have been insufficiently explored in the broader context of global architecture. Socialist modernism is an approach to architecture that was typical to the former socialist countries between 1955 and 1991, most of it left in coverage by architectural history writings. The modernist trend was officially adopted as a result of historical events. 1955 was the official moment when useless stylistical elements in architecture were abandoned by decision of Central Committee of the Soviet Communist Party. 
From their own Stalinist or really socialist architecture was replaced through the socialist bloc. The new stage was World War II reconstruction of the cities. Countries in the former socialist bloc suffered massive de destruction of their built environment and city reconstruction was conducted in a precarious economic context. This required special economic, social, and logistical strategies in order to be able to cover the necessary urban infrastructure, housing, industrial buildings, and public buildings. The renewal to uh, the urban tissue, a set of economic policies were adopted, expressed in architecture by design blueprints and by a completely different stylistical orientation. The new building design direction made it compulsory to get rid of useless stylistical elements, but also to put shapes to adorn facades by a truthful highlighting of wall parts and of large panel elements. The socialist ideological rule of creating identical blueprints was adopted locally through projects that followed the canonized political stylistic elements as required by post-1955 urban policies, architects in Eastern Bloc found an opportunity to take architecture beyond the ideologically imposed limits. Key principles of modernism were adopted in architecture during this period. Form follows function, the use of mass production materials, industrial aesthetics, simplicity and clarity of shapes, rejection of unnecessary detail, etc. In this way, post-Stalinist architecture become a way to recover modernism. Hence, our option to define this trend in architecture or phenomenon, socialist modernism. Socialist modernism is a desire to go back to pre-World War II modernism with architecture attempting to fulfill both cultural requirements and utilitarian and economic ones, the latter having priority. At the same time, the society resents this type of architecture because of the policies enforced by socialist authorities. Often this heritage is not seen for what it is, a complex of architectural objects or urban ensemble, but as a result of <coughs> bad policies. Central and Eastern Europe, Caucasus region and Central Asia boast a number of important architectural monuments that are representative for the post-World War II identity of each country and express the aspiration of socialist era architects starting in 1955 and ending with the fall of communism in 1991. Between 1955 and 1970, Central and Eastern Europe, Caucasus <laughs> region and Central Asia experienced a strong urban development as a result of industrialization visible in all cities and districts, in large and medium cities, Berlin, Warsaw, Budapest, Prague, Bratislava and others. Collective living neighborhoods divided in micro districts built during that period covered large areas and included all complementary functions health, education, culture, shopping, sport, etc. Some of the most important buildings associated with socialist modernism were erected at that time. It was a time when the built environment knew a sharp increase, explaining why these buildings from the large majority in many socialist cities. If these urban areas are not protected as a whole, the general image of the city will suffer. Even if we have some examples of good practice of conservation, at least at maybe promising future restoration works by authorities, which is great, most part of these buildings are still found today in an advanced state of decay. In today's economic and political situation, there is a great risk that these buildings will disappear some of them being already illegally demolished or brutally renovated without taking into account their archi architectural value. On the other hand, we were able to notice that the interest for this type of architecture has increased. One way to measure is the success of socialist modernism, the platform initiated by Baku, including a website, Facebook pages, Instagram, Tumblr, Pinterest, and so on. So far, we have counted about 1 million users. The growing online trend 
and the vivid interest of platform members encourage us to extend our initiative with the database and an in interactive map. Even if a large part of them are not actively involved, rather they were spectators attracted by obscure and abandoned edifices. On the other hand, publishing and promoting the works of that period in social media could help us save this forgotten heritage. Was incontestable historic, aesthetic and cultural value has long been ignored. Proposed solutions. An important part of safeguarding socialist modernist heritage is played by the socialist modernism initiative. These actions are directed at rehabilitating and conservation of buildings in Central and Eastern Europe, Caucasus, Central Asia, and other regions. Our initiative seeks the political discipline and the involvement of both local authorities and the civil society in the process, so as to raise awareness to the architectural value of the buildings, urban planning, and the social and cultural urban issues still existing. We are currently working on the socialistmodernist.com map and database, which are part of a wider program we launched in 2013. Its long-term objectives are to protect and promote valuable architecture built in the former socialist bloc between 1955 and 1991. Its short-term objectives are to list, document, archive, and distribute information on socialist modernist heritage from Central and Eastern Europe, Caucasus, Central Asia, and other regions. The socialist modernist interactive map and smartphone application reveal the most valuable examples of modernist architecture created in the socialist period, from buildings to neighborhoods, park, recreation areas, etc. The website offers you the possibility to navigate through the map in all countries of the former socialist bloc. Objects are identified according to the architectural artist, artistic and urban value criteria, as well as rarity, that is often exceptional. They are organized by functional typology, housing, education, research, culture, medicine, transport, leisure facilities, <coughs> sport, industry, parks, and public spaces, and monuments, which are associated with socialist modernism. The search allows the selective text searches and the four filters, country, current state, building, and function. Unmonitored objective or sites are provided with the following details, name, site, planning institute, planning, and construction period, literature references, and contribution of the research material. An experimental version of the map version two is already available on our website, socialismodernist.com. We would like to turn this map into uh, an interactive community driving tool to help us grow our database and increase the awareness needed to preserve these buildings. We have also created a mobile app that allows anyone to contribute our map. Users are able to locate sites on our map and find directions to them. And add new sites they discovered, upload their own pictures made on site. The information already introduced in the database on a trial basis is available to experts and members of the public who have an interest in socialist modernist heritage. They are also invited to contribute with information, images, and videos to the database. All information originating outside the association will be checked and confirmed by database admins. It must be said that we are still working on the map. That is why some of the options such as video downloads or user forum with individual account are not yet accessible. They will become active one by one once the map is fully operational. Furthermore, we are building a community drive and section to better coordinate the efforts made at local level and help organize our members. Anyone who is passionate about this historical period will be able to join our cause on Instagram, Tumblr, Twitter, or Pinterest by posting with the hashtag socialist modernist. All the important socialist modernist landmarks will be included in this platform, allowing them to be accessed by anyone interested. The Bureau for Art and Urban Research Baku is an association for conservation and urban and cultural rehabilitation. Its main lines of action are to protect, preserve, and rehabilitate socialist built heritage and art work. More precisely, to monitor the maintenance, protection, and conservation activities in Central and Eastern Europe, the Caucasus region, Central Asia, and other countries, allied to the former socialist bloc. 
Besides preserving the historical value of the buildings, we also strive to improve the general urban image. Next, I will present 10 books of Baku Association published in the last six years with the focus on Ukraine and Russia version and a few architectural guide maps of the capitals of the former socialist bloc countries. I publicly zoomed of uh, our attempt to raise awareness and convince the public about the value of this heritage are Baku publications on socialist modernism. The 10 inventory book entitled Socialist Modernism in Romania and Republic of Moldova includes 91 sites. It was published in 2020 uh, on the second edition. The next one is Socialist Modernism in Germany. Includes, uh, it includes 71 sites uh, and uh, uh, it has an introduction by Jörg Haster. The book was published in, uh, in 2018 and it was also published in, in 2021 on the second edition. Socialist Modernism in former Yugoslavia includes 67 sites uh, with an introduction by Sandra Ustokovic uh, and it was published in, in 2020. Socialist Modernism in Eastern Bloc includes 130 sites and was published in 2020 and also includes around 30 countries. Socialist Modernism in Ukraine includes 67 sites with an introduction by Vitaly Shular and it was published in 2021 in around in March. Here is a summary presentation of the main functional categories of socialist modernist structures implemented with some local adaptation in, in the Soviet Ukraine as they were through the socialist bloc. Education institutions have uh, as required by their function a differentiated ground floor, a minimalist level made of particles with large glass areas and facades decorated by vertical concrete section. Metal elements, sculptural or mosaic insertion or geometrical perforated panels distributed on the whole facade. For instance, the lecture and the cinema hall of the Institute of Scientific and Technical Information in Kiev Aka Kiev Flying uh, Sorcerer. Uh, it was built in 1971 and it was designed by uh, Yuryev and Novikov. Uh, when uh, I took this shot, uh, it was undergoing uh, forced transformation to become part of a large commercial center. Maybe our colleagues from Ukraine <laughs> could update us uh, about the actual state of the building later. Uh, the next building is Institute of uh, Marine Engineers from Odessa, Ukraine. It was built in 1975 uh, by Treblitsky and Kalomitsev. The former palace of young pioneers and school children, now Center for Culture and Creativity for Children and Youth in Galicia or Halicia. <laughs> uh, it, it is located in Lviv, Ukraine. It was built in, uh, in the 80s, in for, uh, 84, by Vashak, Smetana, Padlesny, and Engineer Spisa. The next one is the assembly hall of, of the Institute of Nuclear Research for National Academy of Sciences of Ukraine. It was built in the 70s, and it has a very um, phenomenal, let's say, uh, mosaic with the name the struggle for the peaceful atom by artists Zubchenko and Plishetko. Cultural places are generally regular row shapes dominated by full walls and decorated with mosaics, panels, or vertical concrete. This, this is the uh, Palace of Culture from Lvov. It, uh, it don't have mosaics, but uh, I, I think the forms are very interesting. Palace of Pioneers and School Children, uh, now Palace of Children and Youth from Kiev, Ukraine. It has a, uh, a few mosaics uh, on the inside and it, uh, it was a, a very nice uh, a mosaic here on this uh, fountain. But I don't know what, what is it now. I think it was changed or something. It it was renovated and put it in, in yeah, the same place. Now it's fine. Yeah? <laughs> okay. 
and uh, also this structure uh, uh, had a very interesting stair outside, but it was demolished, I think. So <laughs> now, and and this is, uh, uh, I think, is a new addition to the building or something. So it was a, a little bit change. Uh, uh, uh. Uh, the next uh, function is resi residential developments, uh, uh, which are usually bar or tower shape with a regular structure and small windows. One of the examples is the Abalone Collective Housing Tower. Uh, there are uh, two, I think, or three? Two. Two, okay. It was, they were built in uh, 81 uh, by Budilovsky, Kolomet, Katzin, and, and others. Uh, the next one uh, is uh, the function of administration headquarters, and uh, they are considerable in size, often inspired by post-war international architecture. Uh, and uh, here we have the computer center from Lvov. Uh, it was built in 62, uh, just 67, and the, the author is Miron Vesnilovic. Uh, Transport and telecommunication buildings stand out by their diverse volumes while keeping in line with the minimalist principle. They are more varied in shape and local adaptation. This, this is uh, an original building which is part of a bus <coughs> station and, uh, and a hotel, as, as I remember. So this is Lviv bus terminal. It was built in the 80s. Uh, Sahai Dakivsky and Stalerov. And uh, also this, uh, this building is on the cover of the Ukraine uh, book. Or another example is the bus station in Kiev, which are today, I don't know, uh, some, some uh, I think some years ago, I saw some information about uh, this building. Uh, uh, it was restored or something. Yeah, or Okay, so uh, they have this v uh, very uh, valuable, let's say, work of uh, of art. Uh, they are like combined mosaic and mural works by Milnichenko and, and Rybachuk, uh, and they were created in the, in '61. This is the stairs from from uh, from this bus uh, bus station, and it's 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 in a spread of on the book, so it's it's very nice. <laughs> like look, and another um, <coughs> function from the transportation uh, sites is uh, is this uh, lateral platform, which is a part of a sculptural group which is called Peace and Labor. On the other part, it's, it's another platform with, uh, with a lady uh, which has this uh, uh, sign of peace and, and this is the, could be a sign of, of labor. It, they were built in, in the 60s uh, by a large team of architects, engineers and, and sculptors. Um, Shops decorated with mosaic panels service in the Lazir buildings, uh, future wide open spaces, porticos and large glazed surface. Complexes of buildings are connected by general stairs, passages and large terraces. This is uh, another example, which is the Okean shop from Lvov, like Lviv, which was built in 1982, designed by architects Kamenshik and Mastilo. It was, uh, Unfortunately, demolished it in 2018, even if the owner had pledged to preserve most valuable part of, uh, of a large mosaic panel by artist Patek, which decorated the entire front facade and was unscrupulously destroyed. No? Okay, but uh, they, uh, the, the old mosaic, the original. Yeah, the original mosaic. So now it's uh, by the author. Okay. So the building is the same, or they have another building there. Another building. Actually, the one is on fire. The the second one. Okay. 
monumental art was often used in architectural and spatial composition that made it possible to introduce the monumental image in this specific context of the socialist city. Such uh, are the six well-known mosaics panel on the facades of residential buildings on Victory Avenue in Kiev by architect Vladny Bugulovsky. Um, the, the development was built in 71. First thing, public commercial function on the ground floor. <coughs> the large mosaics were signed by artist Ivan Litovchenko and, 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 and Vladimir Priatka with their nest Kotsko. The photo album and digital architectural guide, Socialist Modernism in Ukraine, is an attempt to provide information on an essential area of architectural history in Ukraine. It describes a time when a lot of was built, residential buildings, urban ensembles, park, recreational facilities, public buildings and monuments, and so on. This period still ignored by the history of architecture is indelibly connected to the image of the Ukrainian society as a whole. The book is all the more useful as it focuses on a period of social and economical <coughs> changes in the socialist era that still contain many unknown elements. The next one will be uh, the book on, on Russia. It's called Socialist Modernism in Russia. Includes uh, around 80 sites with an introduction by Natalia Dushkina, and it was published uh, in 2022. <coughs> Here is a summary presentation of the main categories of socialist modernist structures and put all information about the conservation status of some of these outstanding urban architectural and art sites. A high risk of being altered or lost forever. Residential development are usually bar or tower shaped with a regular structure and small windows. Uh, here we have an example uh, with block of flat on uh, Mir Prospect, which means Peace Avenue. It has 25 story high, erected on reinforced concrete pillars that allow traffic underneath. The building has a repetitive volume volumetric pattern and is made of concrete panels precast in the vibro pre-bore <laughs> method, used extensively for similar buildings. Cultural places are generally regular, raw shaped, dominated by full wall and decorated with mosaic panel or vertical concrete elements. In cities and small towns or, or communes, cultural places usually generated a public space for the community. For instance, such as the October Cinema in Moscow, built in 1967 by architects Pasokin and others. Education and research institutions and sport facilities have as required by their function a differentiated ground floor, such as the Institute of Robotics and Technical Cybernetics in St. Petersburg. Uh, it was built uh, during 73 and 86 by uh, by Savin and Artyushin. Transport and telecommunication buildings stand up for their versatile volume while keeping in line with the minimalist principle. They are more varied in shape and local adaptation. One such example would be the Pulkovo Air Terminal in St. Petersburg, built in 1972 by architects Zuk, Vlanin, Ugrimova, Somenskaya, Somenovskaya and others. Administration headquarters and exhibition buildings are considerable in size, often inspired by Western pre-World War II modernist or post-war international architecture. They are defined by massive shapes, large glassed surfaces on the facades, but small individual windows, as well as international structures um, reflected in the aesthetics of the facade. We must mention uh, here the four 26-story administrative buildings shape it as an open book in the southern part of New Arbat Avenue in Moscow. A large commercial area occupies the first four floors of the complex, creating a visible row of shops, service facilities, and restaurants. <coughs> this book on Russia focuses on the conservation status of the urban areas 
and the architecture of the cultural, educational, residential, administrative, and water socialist modernist buildings. Also includes uh, monumental art uh, examples. Its chapters reflecting the development of post-war architecture in Russia. The volume is addressed to a professional public of architects, historians, engineers, as well as the architecture lovers in general. Another three books published during the uh, 21 and 22 are Socialist Modernism in Poland with 71 sites, with an introduction by Blazis Jarkowski. Socialist Modernism in Bulgaria with 67 sites, with an introduction by Emilia Kaleva and Anita Vasilieva, which made yesterday an intervention. Socialist Modernism in Hungary, which includes 71 sites, which was published in uh, in uh, 2022. And our freshly launched Socialist Modernism in Caucasus with 71 sites, published in 2023. I have to mention that they will launch in the next two months the book entitled Socialist Modernism in Baltic countries, uh, which is now in uh, in production, with uh, contributions from Laura Ingerpu and Vaidas Pirtulis. The combined concept of photo album and digital guide with QR codes connected to our socialist modernism interactive map and smartphone application on Apple and Google Play is an objective illustration of the socialist modernist phenomenon through a series of examples of buildings and architectural ensembles erected between 1955 and 1991 in the former Eastern Bloc countries. The materials are the result of field research and archive and library work performed by Balk Association. The members of the association started documenting the trend 10 years ago and are still in the process of checking and adding information. In addition to the mentioned books, uh, we continue to publish a series of maps with the capitals of uh, countries from the uh, former socialist bloc, Chisinau, Bucharest, Erevan, Tbilisi, Moscow, uh, St. Petersburg, uh, Berlin, Minsk, Warsaw, Belgrade. The last three are in the uh, production. Now. So this is an example of, of the map. It, it has a cover and, and, and inside is the map, which is an imaginary map, uh, which was made by, uh, by a French artist, uh, Ala Russo, which is my sister, which was co-opted for the painting works in our edu editorial projects. Also, uh, built during the socialist regime, these edifices promoted by Baku have been conceived in local contexts that were favorable to architectural creation, insp inspired by pre-World War II modernism and Western modernism. Socialist modernist platform invites architects, urban planners, historians, and art historians, conservationist artists, activists, and anyone interested in this issue to contribute and to broaden the platform. Send us any information regarding neighborhoods, buildings, monuments, park, and cultural landscapes, or any relevant architectural elements. Please don't forget to specify their location and address. All the information will be published on our website under the name of the author. In 2016, okay. The association initiated the classification process for four socialist modernist buildings in Kishinev Republic of Moldova. In, and in August uh, 2019, the state circuit uh, uh, designed by Alek Rechenko and Semyon Shohet in Kishinev became a protected monument after a decision of National Historical Monument Committee of Moldovan Ministry of Culture. And in May in 2022, it was included in the Historical Monuments Register. Another great news is that on July 27, 2022, the National Hotel in Chisinau by architect uh, uh, Adolf Garbontov and others became a protected monument as well. So uh, the Socialist Modernist Research pra Platform initiated by Baku in 2014 starts to make a visible impact with the classification of the Chisinau State Circuit, the Hotel National and the Cluj Telephone Palace part of our wider aim to raise awareness for the value of socialist architecture in the second half of the 20th century. The Socialist Modernism Initiative plays an important part in safeguarding socialist heritage built uh, in 1955 and 1991. Uh, 
Uh, we are currently working on the revitalization proposal for several socially modernist objects, both in cities, municipalities of Romania and Republic of Moldova. In the first phase of this project, we will concentrate on the analysis, research study followed by the second phase when we will elaborate regulation and will deal with educational local authorities and the inhabitants of those protected areas through a legislative program concerning the architectural stylistic of the buildings district erected in socialist era. The proposal suggests the demolition of parasitic structures, prohibiting the closing of balconies and any type of DI abusive rehabilitation, removing excessive advertising from the facades and finally making these buildings, neighborhoods, leisure facilities, uh, park, etc., part of historical heritage. <laughs> so thank you very much for listening. <laughs> Thank you very much for the <laughs> presentation. And, uh, I have to excuse that I um, disturbed you a, a little bit, but, but we are late and we have seven additional and co uh, uh, comments on the, the whole issue. Uh, and we will try to uh, finalize it in an ending discussion, which is closing up um, at the end. So we have seven more presentations or short comments. One of them is of Vital Schulja, which I, who I already mentioned, and I hope that he is with us and that he give, can give his presentation now online. And then we have other presentations and statements. Three of them are with PowerPoint presentations, and I hope that everything will work as intended. So, Vital Schulja, you are with us? Okay. Please be patient. I am patient too. So, um, can you hear us? Hello. Um. Yeah. Um. She said she has uh, sound problems, but um, I think, uh, yeah, I don't know where he is. Yeah, but he can um, open it by itself. Mm 
Knowing is offline. Ja, ist jetzt rausgegangen, ja? Anscheinend. Ich, ich schreibe, nicht. wenn man jetzt so in der Hand kann man erstmal den nächsten oder die ja, nächste ja. rannehmen. Ich schreibe ihm. Good evening. Okay, uh, I'm Anna Bagnavitska, and uh, I will speak a little about uh, the transformation of uh, attitude, public awareness, uh, and research interest, and also mm, in socialist uh, modernist architecture in Russia in recent years. Uh, but first of all, I would like to thank uh, Dimitri Russo for his introduction and his incredible project. I think it's so important, especially the part with the map. And I also have a question who is actually the photographer. <laughs> but you can tell me that uh, later. Uh, it's interesting for me that uh, Baku's project started in 2014. It is about the same time when we, we in Moscow with a group of colleagues formed uh, Institute of Modernism, probably it was uh, 2013, and it was after a few years of the growing interest in such architecture. But when I was um, looking at your images of Ukrainian architecture of the period, I realized that I, uh, that a very few of the buildings are familiar to me because I visited both Lviv and Kiev before that time. So this architecture just uh, fell into blind spot in uh, my perception, and I think that's how most of the people see it, or rather don't see it as architecture. It's a built environment that's uh, familiar, but not interesting, or something sometimes ugly, and uh, so on. And that perception is changing, I think, under the influence of several factors. First of all, of course, the time itself, it's not uh, the yesterday, yes, uh, not uh, last year's fashion, but actual history. And uh, for young people who were actually born after the collapse of the Soviet Union, it's really history and uh, maybe intriguing and something uh, not normal every day. Yeah. So the time distance is the main factor. The second factor, I think, is the spreading of digital photography and uh, social networks, because when first digital cameras appeared and then smartphones, everyone was uh, starting making pictures. And when people start to m make pictures, they, they want to post online to show off for the before their friends, they looking around trying to find interesting subjects. So uh, people who were not uh, specifically interested in architecture started to be intrigued by these visual images of Soviet mosaics and uh, sculptures and buildings themselves. Uh, and if we are speaking about research interest, uh, I think that colleagues in post-Soviet countries followed uh, the steps of the Western colleagues who started to closely look in and to post-war modernist architecture, maybe 10 years before. Uh, 
and uh, the interest in Soviet heritage, uh, in my experience, was uh, first provoked by this outside interest by uh, Western colleagues. And uh, I think that photographers actually play a very important role in this changing perspective because they actually teach people to look at this architecture with new eyes, to understand its uh, aesthetic qualities, its strange beauty, and maybe sometimes focusing on its strangeness, but still uh, they focus our attention and people start to think about why did these buildings were actually built, what were they function, why many of them are dilapidated now, uh, uh, which functions are no longer relevant in the market society, uh, especially suffering the huge cinemas, for example. In Soviet times, they built uh, cinemas for thousand seats or even uh, uh, 1,400 seats, and now it's just impossible to fill these buildings with uh, uh, customers. So uh, this public interest uh, in turn gets served by different initiatives. Again, thanks to the social networks, it is possible to offer mm, sightseeing trips on any subjects, including socialist realist architecture. And people would gladly go and learn something new. In Moscow, this uh, initiative called Moscow Through the Eyes of Engineers, and now they partly moved to Yerevan, not wanting to continue in Russia. Uh, another practice is uh, urban sketching. You know, it's also a very popular pastime uh, when people uh, with no artistic training start to sketch in the city and they're guided by professional artists. And the program, the itinerary, is formed by some uh, architectural historian, uh, for example, me. And again, and they post their results online and create more interests. And uh, uh, of course, there are um, exhibition uh, several exhibition mm, programs, some of them international, uh, some of them mm, just uh, initiated by various cultural institutions. Uh, and again, we're talking about public interest. But what about the preservation? Uh, I think in Russia, the most serious attempt uh, was made about seven years ago. You know, the Russian preservation law demands that 40 years passed since the completion of the buildings. And as more and more buildings uh, built in the 60s and the 70s passed this uh, 40 years limit uh, or approaching it, uh, the Union of Architects uh, uh, tried to make a group uh, mm, application to the uh, preservation authorities to include a selection of about, I think, 70 buildings from throughout, throughout Russia. They were selected uh, by the experts and, of course, uh, these uh, experts include some of architects who were active uh, during the era. But this group uh, uh, application was rejected, flatly rejected. Uh, and uh, for several years, uh, the procedure to nominate uh, a building or a complex uh, to be listed uh, demanded that uh, a person or a body who make an uh, application will present the, the whole 
expert, uh, expert conclusion, the whole research, which is the rather time and labor consuming and is in paid, so uh, the process stuck. But in several instances, when we managed to find resources to prepare this research beforehand and to make the applications, they all were rejected. Every one of them were rejected. Actually, from this period, Moscow, for example, has uh, like two or three buildings protected. Uh, so uh, it's not in the interest, you know, this, uh, the decision makers uh, didn't uh, uh, make the same evolution of thinking as the public. So mm, not much progress in this uh, case, but the only hope that we had, again, I'm talking about the situation before the war. Uh, now Russia has some young architects who deeply care about this kind of heritage and who are able to make renovation very delicately with great respect to the original architectural and artistic values of the structures. And we have some very good examples in Kazan, in Nizhny Novgorod, and also in Moscow. But what will happen now, we don't know. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you very much for the presentation of for the comment and for uh, presenting the situation and the development or the problems in the Russian Federation. Now we will we'll continue with uh, Pablo Kravchuk, who will be uh, assisted by Mikhail Ilchenko, and then we have Evgenia Molyar with her presentation, and then we will see how we can include or implement uh, Vitaly Shulyar again, uh, who had some sound problems, but, but we hope that we have solved it. It's up to you, thank you. Thank you. Vitaly Usih, the theme of Ukrainian modernism is a very important thing to do in the context of the 20th century. Well, first of all, I'm glad to see you all, and the uh, uh, topic, the issues of Ukrainian modernism deserve a special attention. Okay. Uh, a special attention uh, due to opportunity to rethink uh, the perspective of the 20th century. Uh, у наших сучасних виданнях, присвячених 20 столітю, виданнях українських, модернізм відсутній, як, перш за все, життєве явище, яке формувало середовище життя більшої частини населення України. In our contemporary editions, in fact, uh, the modernism as a phenomena, as a phenomena uh, which shape the living conditions and living environment, in fact, is missing. А тепер дуже стисло тези, які, як я вважаю, допоможуть нам вирішити цю проблему. Перш за все, необхідно усвідомити, що у Радянському Союзі модерністів не існувало. So I would like to offer you a number of thesis arguments which perhaps would help to go in this direction. And my first thesis uh, is that in the Soviet Union there were no any modernist architects. Реально опитані люди, які працювали на регіональному рівні, на різних щаблях, тут вони представлені, ніяк себе власне як модерністи не ідентифікували. So those people who were working uh, on the regional level, the just the uh, portraits are here. They never identified themselves as modernists. модернізм, як ми його вже називаємо у сучасній історіографії, а тоді сучасна соціалістична архітектура, це була ідеологія радянського урбанізму. So the second point I would like to emphasize is that what we call as modernism 
uh, and modernist practice, in fact, appear to be a sort of ideological uh, embodiment of, uh, contempor of, of contemporary architecture. Яка вирішувала завдання, перш за все, прагматичне. Вона мала пов'язати у одну картину світа усі технологічні процеси, які відбувалися з нестримним розширенням людського простору протягом 60-х, 70-х років. So it was of a very pragmatic nature and it could put together with ideology very different phenomena like for instance the need to uh, reorganize the urban space and so living conditions so on. Власне, такі концепції як НЕР это контр були, скажімо, контр концепції за гальні ідеології радянської архітектури, які певним чином намагалися показати, що зростання не може бути нескінченим, необхідно для комфортного середовища мати певні нормативи. So those conceptions which are associated and uh, sometimes claimed as modernist in fact was uh, as counter conceptions the response uh, to solving the prag uh, pragmatic practical issues uh, like for instance organization of uh, this spatial uh, spatial territory and the growth urban growth in that period Щодо власне українського uh, модернізму ну ми Домовилися так його називати української соціалістичної архітектури. Вона перш за все має наздоганяючий характер, а простою мовою потягунки. І певні моменти, як проблему художньої творчості, визнавали і самі архітектори, коли ми почитаємо семінари при правлінні радянських архітекторів, які збиралися з певною періодичністю, там це питання порушував у тому числі Хан Магамут. Ми не маємо сумніву, що він розумів, про що казав. So what we call as Ukrainian modernism or Ukrainian socialist modernism is a very specific thing, which in fact demonstrated the character of legend behind or Uh, epigonic character which is trying to uh, to follow some special narrative and for instance the uh, Selim uh, uh, Khan Magomedov uh, a scholar he was uh, just making his own response to this topic and he well understood well this problem this contradiction deep contradiction in the modernism originalness radianskog modernism а точніше українського радянського модернізму, вона, скажімо так, носила характер не етнокультурні, не національні мотиви, а це новий феномен лідерства на рівні регіону. І саме оригінальність позначається на лідерах які визначали архітектурний поступ в найбільш урбанізованих регіонах. So what we can call as uh, originality and authentic character of Ukrainian socialist modernism stems from not from ethno cultural character, not from some ethnic root, but mostly in terms it can be just interpreted in terms of the leadership new leaders of the Soviet architecture uh, who shaped some special criteria and uh, were trying to just to move towards new conception and ideas. Становлення радянського соціалістичного модернізму в Україні призвело до появи феномену концептуального міста, коли крім основного плану виконаного у будівельних об'ємах мав існувати і план Uh, який uh, пов'язував uh, з просвітницькою роботою, uh, діяльністю uh, професійних інституцій тіла міста у єдиний організм і доносила це до населення.
So the idea of Ukrainian socialist modernism and so the, the, the Ukrainian socialist modernism practice, in fact, launched uh, this rise of the new urban conceptions, uh, conceptualization of uh, urban growth itself, when uh, these territories and spaces were considered as a complicated organism, not just a uh, urban design plane, not just of architecture, but also as a just uh, social phenomena and educational practice. So just this new conceptual, more uh, more uh, um, complicated vision of of this phenomena. Uh, and соответственно, когда другой концептуальный план фрагментировался уже с Росподом Радянского Союза, начались процессы деградации низкой тканины практически в всех местах Украины. So when this uh, united, more or less united conceptual uh, vision of uh, urban growth uh, faced the collapse of the Soviet Union, it was fragmented and finally we can see this uh, decline of the initiatives uh, in different parts of industrial areas of Ukraine. So uh, Ukrainian socialist modernism uh, helped to establish uh, this uh, special view of uh, urban, urban uh, urban area and conceptual urban thinking about the organism of uh, city's development. So and yeah, it's just uh, also linkage uh, uh, to the previous commentary. So here you can see the opening of the American uh, uh, exhibition in 1962, which shows uh, the cons uh, appearance and establishment of consumer and society, which was also launched by this conceptualizing of uh, urban growth in Ukraine by socialist modernists. Radzianski modernism prezvyv, ostend, Radzianski modernism prezvyv u kincevomu pitsamku do deideologizaci niskogu prostoru. Це крім uh, житлових масивів, де було, скажімо так, поміщено uh, колективний контроль, державний контроль до ось таких uh, виконаних в інтернаціональному стилі зі специфічними uh, функціональними uh, моментами uh, будівель громадського призначення. So uh, the one of the benefits, one of the uh, outcomes of the socialist modernism that it helped uh, Soviet uh, in, in, in Ukraine in the Soviet period that it helped to reconsider the main urban practices either on the level of the urban space in general at, and also uh, in, the, in the cases of the concrete building, for instance, of administration nature. Расширену аргументацію ми надавати не будемо, бо у нас немає часу. Але коли у когось будуть запитання, ось моя адреса, звертайтеся, більш розширений матеріал вам буде пересилано поштою. So the broader arguments uh, would be difficult to be given right now, so, but if you have any questions, you can contact me by email. And... Власне, над цим матеріалом ми будемо працювати далі з німецькими партнерами, адже є для цього приміщення. So we're planning to work with the same materials, with these materials together in, in collaboration with the German partners. And well, it's Yaku, Yaku. Now we will continue with the presentation of Eugenia Molia. Yes, okay. So I may invite you, the floor is yours.
have some uh, few uh, remarks because uh, uh, I don't know how to talk about social social uh, architectural heritage without mentioning uh, how this heritage is being destroyed by Russians uh, in Ukraine. So I start uh, with a um, uh, fragment of um, uh, our uh, archival materials from uh, the exhibition we organized as Dana Day Initiative in 2018 uh, in Severodonetsk. Uh, it's an exhibition about urban planning project of uh, Severodonetsk. This city was founded by uh, uh, in uh, uh, the first five years uh, mm, of Soviet era in uh, Donbas region. Uh, and uh, mostly it was built after the Second World War uh, in frame of uh, post-war reconstruction. Uh, according to a unique project development um, by local expert for this area. So in our exhibition we want to uh, emphas uh, emphasize that it's not a typical Soviet settlement, but uh, it's a unique Ukrainian settlement uh, was founded uh, in Soviet period. And uh, following a long and fierce struggle uh, in 2022, uh, Russian army occupied the city and destroyed it uh, by 90% uh, of uh, said official data. Uh, but not only firearms uh, pose a threat to Ukrainian Soviet cultural heritage, this heritage is under a double threat because Soviet era history is subject to constant manipulation and speculation by Kremlin propaganda. And in the occupied territories, uh, Russian occupiers uh, restore Lenin's monument uh, and uh, close to uh, um, flag of Russian Federation put a Soviet red flag. Uh, as a result, this heritage now less and less associated with uh, former Ukrainian SSR and more and more uh, with modern Russian Federation. And, um, oops, um, yes. and uh, this leads to growing intolerance and hatred towards this heritage uh, in society. This is not about modernistic architecture, but it's about commemorative uh, uh, Ukrainian Soviet heritage. It's an entire part of uh, this, uh, um, this heritage. Uh, the situation became critical, especially after the full-scale invasion. And uh, this photo, the removal of Soviet, um, Soviet era monuments, uh, uh, mm, and m most of uh, it I found in regional media and uh, in social media with the caption, dismantling monuments to Russian soldiers. Why did Soviet soldiers become Russian soldiers? Because Soviet is not longer perceived as Ukrainian past, but only as Russian present. Uh, but uh, this photo is for me, which depict a former soldiers, a former <coughs> Soviet soldiers sh uh, being shot by modern Russian soldier, uh, is a very telling proof that is not the same. Uh, due to such manipulations, uh, Ukrainian society ready to get rid, ready to get rid of the cultural heritage of the complex, dramatic, and colonial past. But the past of our country, of our people, who even in totalitarian times not only preserved their subjectivity, tradition, culture, and language, moreover, it created a new, unique Ukrainian Soviet cultural phenomenon, which is, no, uh, which is now unfortunately <coughs> disappearing completely and very rapidly. And uh, this is concerned not only uh, Ukraine, because we could see that in uh, Baltic countries, uh, for, for instance, the Soviet uh, heritage is being destroyed and um, uh, is being destroyed as something associated with Russia as a result of the fact that Russian Federation has compromised their great culture with uh, their great crimes. Uh, today, researchers of socia socialist heritage are faced with the task of reappropriation of this heritage from Russianness. Uh, we need to emphasize uh, local regional schools which had their history, their own history, not only thanks to, but also and mostly in spite of Russian domination. Uh, I think it uh, should be very symbolic and right, exclude of list, uh, from list of this publication, a uh, book about uh, Russian modernism. Because for too long, Russia has dominated, especially in this area. 
Uh, and now our professional solidari solidarity should be talking uh, about Armenian, Uzbek, uh, Estonian modernism without Russian. Let, uh, yeah, let local researchers talk about uh, their, mm, their modernism without Russians. Uh, and I would also like to see solidarity from our Russian colleagues who would not only speak out against the war, but act against it. And in our situation, this action is a silence, nothing personal. But don't allow the Russian voice to be heard in the cultural field, because it intensified Russia on the battlefield. It's my point. Thank you for your attention. for the f closing uh, remark or thesis which should be discussed. I would uh, propose that we continue with the statements and now it is uh, up to Oksana Gorinovic to comment uh, the books and then at the end I we will uh, to try to, sorry? You have no comment? <laughs> you, are, you are on my list, okay. <laughs> then, um, then we, we can we go on with the uh, presentation of Mikhail Ilchenko. You, you have a, a presentation. It's not commenting uh, the, 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 the books, but uh, then le let's try and at the end we will ask uh, Vital Shalya from Lyft to, to uh, uh, join us, please. Yeah, thanks so much. So I will try to keep uh, the time limit. Um, well, in fact, once again, I, I would like to identify myself, first of all, as a sociologist. So I'm interested in the processes which are currently going on. And concerning socialist modernism, uh, there are two things which I uh, emphasize. The first thing, the perception which is changing at the moment. And the second thing, activity. For that reason, I'm especially thankful for the previous speaker uh, put in a special accent on this sphere. So I would like to apply for the case and for the experience of the city where I was born and where I spent most of my life. Uh, the city which is uh, interested due to very specific tradition of the modernist architecture because due to the, according to the density of the interwar modernism, this is one of the, uh, well, leading places in the whole uh, space of the former Soviet countries may be comparable only to Kharkiv. And also what is interesting in terms of the architectural issues is uh, on the one hand continuity of this tradition from the interval period to the let's say so-called second wave and in some sense even a su succession. Uh, during the last five, six years, uh, so especially before start of the war, before the invasion, uh, Yekaterinburg marked a quite a real growth, a real growth of activities uh, around the heritage of socialist modernism. So several groups of activists made a uh, few guidebooks, uh, online catalogs, so everything that was mentioned here, so in one way or another, and different activities. Uh, my concern regarding the topic was uh, to understand what is happening at the moment, what was happening after the 24th of February after uh, the Russian invasion of Ukraine. But I would like to make a, a special focus on the interview which I made uh, on December 2021 with one of the prominent urban activists in the field, with Polina Ivanova, when I asked her, well, how would you say what is the, most, the main obstacle to you? Uh, what is the main challenge to you while walking? So I expected to hear the answer regarding the finances, communication with authorities and so on. And she uh, answered very clearly, uh, this is a lack of narrative, lack of clear myth. 
I don't know how to present this architecture for the broad audience. I am trying to share this experience with other regions in different with different countries, but I don't know how to make it plausible, credible, well, comprehensible for the broad audience. So, uh, well, I answer uh, well. I ask the second question, but still, what would you use as a basis for constructing this narrative? She answered, and this was December, uh, December uh, year 2021, uh, that perhaps it would be associations with demilitarization, democratization, openness, and consumerism. So when I uh, reread in this uh, uh, interview right now, so of course it sounds quite uh, uh, sad and uh, dramatic. But uh, it's very important to trace uh, those activities which still didn't stop, in fact, in Russia, but acquired quite a very specific form. Uh, together with colleagues, we've made around 30 interviews uh, with different, mostly anonymous, with different people who were involved and currently involved in the activities regarding not only socialist modernism, but Soviet, modern, Soviet architecture in general. And I would just, as a part of discussion, just to point where preliminary is where we have a discussion as we have a debate to things which are emphasized. Is if we are speaking about so-called decolonization approach in terms of in the scale of uh, Eastern Europe and European scale, I would say that the very similar tendencies can be found in Russia in the scale of the Russian side. Because if uh, Ukraine asking, well, if we, we have and real, what, why, why should we uh, perceive Kharkiv as some kind of rep replica from Moscow, then the same story can be uh, claimed and posed by the uh, Ural Architectural School. And the same story can be uh, seen here. And you know, that a, a sort of a distancing from Moscow, sometimes overestimated, exaggerated, I, I, I don't give any evaluation about that, uh, becoming a sort of a, uh, a, sort of a psychological uh, cover for those people who are trying to distance themselves from the war experiences, just being concentrated on a very local agenda, trying to overlook what is happening around. That's our feeling from speaking with different activists right now, because another very, I mean, interesting tendency, and it can be testified by at least three, four projects, which I'm keeping in mind at the moment, is the concentration on the local life of the neighborhoods. Socialist modernism as a way of uh, dealing with very local agendas uh, which are very far from any ideological, political, social issues. And here I have a clear linkage and, well, not just quite sad confirmation and what was told by uh, uh, Evgenia previously, because this is a way to go not just to help or articulate any linkages, vice versa, opposite direction, be concentrated on something which is going very locally uh, and uh, going distance from any politics. Uh, it's uh, quite interesting also story that for most people who stayed for different reasons in Russia or preferred to go on with the same activities, that this sphere is becoming a sort of a, let's say, I'm trying to be careful with, with categories, a sort of an internal migration, which of course, well, resembles in some kind uh, practices of the Soviet period, and uh, becoming a sort of a, well, um, uh, backdoor compromise with local authorities which are allowing activists to act and to work in this field on the one hand, given some resources for that, but on the other hand, completely excluding them from discussing any political, social, ideological, even historical uh, things uh, which were quite acute even on December 2021, just comparing interviews with the same people. Unfortunately, for me, it's, I mean, dramatically, it uh, proves most of the claims and pretensions and critics concerning that. But again, I mean, that, that's what we're having right now. Uh, just as an example, this is a, a project a quite, uh, well, a complicated, interesting project, which was planned to be a part of a, a, a rethinking of the urban and modernist nature of Sverdlovsk, which finally came to become a sort of a local oriented uh, um, initiative 
to trace how the neighborhoods uh, resembles the memory uh, memories of these local areas. Uh, how they reflect a very special vision of these uh, concrete places, uh, staying again very distant from any uh, ideological, political, social feeling. And more important, the very my last point, even trying to be distanced from putting it into the international context, at least in these concrete cases. Thank you. Shuliar uh, in Lviv. I thought you, you had already contact and the sound was clear, so he maybe he can give his presentation and comment, and then we will continue here in the auditorium. I'm glad uh, to take part in this interesting meeting, but uh, I had no practice in conversation in English during last years, and uh, if it's possible uh, to get the translator from Ukrainian on English. Are you ready? May I begin? Добрий вечір, шановні учасники. Я радий взяти участь в такій цікавій дискусії про цей історичний період розвитку архітектури у Східній Європі і в Україні, зокрема. Мій виступ буде дуже короткий. Я думаю, що всю інформацію і візуально про архітектуру соціалістичного модернізму дав мій колега Дмитро Русу. Я лише хочу зробити пару зауваг у цей період. Ну, його рамки в часі починаються з 1955 року. Можна попросити почати знову? знову? Ще раз. Uh, вас просять просто зробити стейтмент, такий аргумент. Перший. Добре, ще раз. Добрий вечір, шановні учасники семінару. Я радий взяти участь у цій зустрічі. Yeah, but 
It's now it's a statement, especially for our Ukrainian and Russian speaking uh, guests who are okay. eager to, to understand. And thank you very much okay. for your readiness <laughs> and willingness to, to support us. But then we will uh, we will record it and then we can see later how it can be. <laughs> <laughs> Так, я не зумів. Мені продовжувати? Yes. Добре. Я думаю, що візуальну презентацію архітектури соціалістичного модернізму в періоду 55-91 року зробив по Україні зробив мій колега Дмитро Русу. Значить, в мене буде тільки декілька таких коротких зауваг. Транслейт, пліз. На мою думку, одною з таких основних причин такого корінного повороту в архітектурі 1955 року і відмові від того, що називали по російський термін «украшательство» – це була гостра проблема нестачі житла в Радянському Союзі. І розв'язати цю проблему інакше, як створивши базу індустріального домобудування, і перевівши, власне, все житле будівництво на такі індустріальні рейки, було, мабуть, неможливо. Ну, а, скажімо, традиційні архітектурні форми історичні архітектури, які характерні були для попереднього періоду, скажімо, цьому заважали. От, і, ну, от, як результат, ми мали будівництво, Сотень заводів залізобетонних виробів, домобудівних комбінатів по всьому Радянському Союзу і появи наступні два, а то й три десятиліття на околицях великих міст, великих житлових масивів, забудованих типовими будинками і з такою дуже не скажемо скромною, але такою бідною архітектурою. Цей процес призвів і до змін у проєктній практиці, тому що всі ці житлові будинки, громадські будинки, такі як школи, дитячі садочки, торгові центри, лікувальні заклади, були створені так звані типові проекти Центральними проектами інститутів, інститутами в Москві, в тодішньому Ленінграді, в Києві, в інших столицях тодішніх союзних республік. І робота архітектора, я це і сам маю такий досвід, зводили до того, що на кожний Будинок, була готова проєктна документація, готові проєктні альбоми, треба було тільки, скажімо, індивідуально розробити фундаменти, ну, скажімо, десь якісь корективи внести фасади, пов'язані з фактикальним плануванням, так, різними відписками, там, скажімо, по кутах будинку. А все решта було в тих альбомах. І з такому вигляді ця проєктна документація передавалася на будівництво. Роль архітектора була звернена до мінімуму. Це було поставлено на рейки будувати більше, швидше. І, скажімо, про саму архітектуру, як таку, на якийсь період взагалі забули. Те, зокрема, у Львові відгукнулися на тому, що у Львівському політехнічному інституті спеціальність архітектуру закрили взагалі на декілька років. І це було такий героїчний зусиль 
зокрема такого старшого професора Богенського, який ще залишився, ще закладав тут до Другої світової війни, який як інтелігентна людина взяв фрак, поїхав у Москву, в міністерство добиватися відновлення архітектурної спеціальності у Львові. Власне, ті Зразки архітектури соціалістичного модернізму, які ми, власне, показали у альбомі, випущеному фондом Баку, це, власне, ця архітектура, яка робилася, скажімо, індивідуально. Out of time now, but I would like to thank you very much, even if I did not understand <laughs> your, your comment. But we, we have recorded it, and I think we will try to reactivate and to revitalize the whole process of communication later. We underestimated the problems of an international, multinational, multilingual. Uh, communication uh, this this evening. So thank you very much. Um, and I would like to go further and ask Svetlana Smolenska and then our special guests give their presentation uh, for, and then we will close. No, no, unfortunately not. It is too deep. Uh, I want to say some words about all these uh, uh, albums. It is very, uh, it is useful, very useful publication for popularization of socialist heritage among the population. Images are the easiest and most accessible way to convey information to the average person. It is also important uh, that the book of photographs clearly demonstrates how interesting and diverse uh, this heritage is. This is uh, the first uh, broad step towards its evaluation. It is a pity that uh, the publication devoted to Ukraine did not reflect uh, the objects of this period from Kharkiv and Dnipro, for example, uh, the two largest Ukrainian cities after Kyiv. Although uh, typical buildings were predominate in that period, but individual public buildings designed according to individual projects in uh, the spirit of post-war modernism also began to appear from the end of 1950s in Kharkiv. Uh, uh, for example, the cinema and concert hall Ukraine the author was uh, young in that period, Kharkiv architects uh, Yuri Plaksiv and uh, um, Sergei Vasilyev, Vadim Vasilyev. And uh, we visited yesterday, we visited your um, Congress Hall, it seems to me, yes? It was, uh, it was uh, uh, given to Berlin uh, from USA government, yes? So uh, Ukra our Ukraine, whole, whole Ukraine, uh, this is uh, something uh, the same. It is uh, smaller, uh, of course, but it is uh, the same um, construction, cable steed structure. So it, is, it will be interesting to, um, to find parallels uh, between different uh, buildings in the same, it, it was created, as I remember, that hall was created in 1957, yes? Is it right? Yes. So uh, 
uh, our uh, architects uh, uh, created uh, this uh, project mm, at the end of 50s. It seems to me 1959, I, I don't remember really, but uh, similar time. So it, it's interesting, really. And um, the most uh, successful uh, individual projects were transferred to the category of reuse projects. In Kharkiv, uh, there are examples of reuse projects. Uh, uh, we have uh, uh, covered market. Uh, uh, it is a uh, reuse project from Kiev, a very interesting building also. And uh, in turn, uh, the Kharkiv Cinema and Concert, Concert Hall Ukraine was uh, partially redesigned and reused in Kherson under the name Jubilee. So it is um, now a very important building from that period for Kherson also. Uh, but not only individual buildings have value. Uh, modernist uh, urban planning principles embodied in large-scale residential from residential areas uh, view, in my opinion, the highest achievement of the late uh, 1950s, 1980s. It was uh, the idea of microzoning, a well uh, thought out system of cultural and community services, landscaping, transport, and so on. Uh, the uh, placement of schools, kindergartens, sports, places uh, for recreation, and so on, cultural institutions, was calculated in advance for the number of residents, had its own service radius for ex accessibility and convenience. Uh, the norms included sanitary and hygienic requirements for uh, ventilation and landscaping between house territories, um, isolation of each, uh, insulation of each apartment. Already in the late of 1950s, a large new residential area were being designed and built in Kharkiv, such as Pavlova Pole, Selekcionne Stance, and in 1970s, 80s, the construction of the giant uh, Saltivka residential area for mm, uh, 300,000 inhabitants, maybe the largest in Ukraine, uh, in the northeast of the city was underway and then Alexeyevsky mm, area also, residential area. Unfortunately, uh, the attitude towards uh, this heritage in society and in the leadership of the country is indifferent. It was, uh, this attitude was formed before the war. Only a few objects were included in the list of monuments of local importance. For example, of this uh, whole uh, Ukraine is um, in the list, uh, uh, put in the list of local importance only. Uh, the preservation of this socialist heritage became especially acute in connection with the military destruction. Uh, for example, whole jubilee in in Kherson uh, get uh, damage, uh, and uh, I have even photos. But sorry, I don't. I, I don't can show it now. The northern part of Saltivsky residential area in Kharkiv was subjected to severe uh, destruction. Will they be restored if they still have not received a proper assessment, even from scientists? I think uh, I, I'm 
I think there is a need to develop at the international level a scientific substantia substantiation, yes, of the value of this type of heritage. Uh, uh, to develop a common strategy for its conservation for all interested countries. Thank you. I don't know. I just tell a oh, comment. No, okay, so uh, now I happen to be the last, so I can somehow summarize previously uh, said ideas. Some ideas that I wanted to say are already here, here. And it is good because I feel that uh, different people have similar ideas and similar feeling of what is going on. So um, I would like to start with an idea that I have a feeling that bringing together these two presentations is inappropriate. Because I honestly understand that I'm from the position of inhabitant of a planet. I understand that uh, Russian and Ukrainian socialist modernism heritage has equal value. That's not the point of discussion. But considering the situation of war, we understand that, yes, we understand that there are problems in preserving socialist modernist heritage in Russia. We understand that there are problems with including them into protection uh, lists. We understand that there is a problem with understanding the value of perception of uh, this architecture. But Ukraine has all the same problems, but also additionally, Ukraine has the problem of Russia itself. And that's why it's uncomparable to speak about, oh, the government doesn't want to include those buildings in the list. We have all those problems. Our government also doesn't want to include those buildings in the list. Uh, in Kyiv, we have maybe only 10 buildings of socialist modernism that have protection, not more than 10. But at the same time, we have hundreds, maybe thousands of buildings destroyed during the war. So um, this also brings us many new problems because if there was no war, there was some hope that in some time these buildings will have the protection. But as they are already destroyed, they won't have that protection. As they are already destroyed, they won't be rebuilt as they don't have protection status. And another problem is that uh, it was already told about it, the perception, uh, the attitude to this architecture. Uh, because of war, I feel that all my activities for last six or seven years have to be started from the beginning, if from the beginning. Because actually, uh, uh, all for all these years, I'm trying to speak to people and say that this is heritage, this is valuable, this is our heritage. It was done by our architects, uh, sculptors, uh, artists, engineers, and this is part of our, this should be part of our identity. But as war started, as Evgeny already said, it is even harder and harder to explain that this is ours. And we get uh, a lot of heritage being destroyed. And our heritage is being destroyed, as it was said, from two sides. Because on one side we have war, and on another side we have that problem of hatred towards our heritage that is not yet considered. Because the problem is the same. Uh, modernist heritage is too young to be understood as valuable from a um, um, wide uh, audience of people. And um, another thought that I wanted to say is, also was mentioned here, it was the criticism of Moscow-centered view. But uh, the Moscow-centered view is, uh, the, the reason of this view is obvious because all these researchers were uh, initially started in Moscow and they were started on based on Moscow processes. That's why we have this crucial dates for turning point of from uh, interwar modernism to neoclassic Stalinist architecture date as 1932, because originally the process started from there. But if we uh, research it based on uh, Ukrainian architecture, we would see that this change happens later. In Kyiv, you won't find any Stalinist architecture earlier than 1934. And even the projects that were developed 
as constructivists were re remade in 1934. So we have another date if we do research not based on some theory uh, that was um, a result of concrete research based on uh, Russian and Moscow-centered view. And the same for socialist modernism. Because we everywhere have the date of 1955, and we know why this date is the starting date of socialist modernism, because it was the date when uh, those um, decisions to fight against excesses in architecture was taken. But you won't find any socialist modernism buildings in Ukraine built in 1955. You won't find them built in 1956. You won't maybe <laughs> find... Uh, almost nothing from 1957, but you will find Stalinist neoclassical architecture that was complete in 1957, in 1958, sometimes in 1964, sometimes in 1967 and 1968. So we have that energy. And uh, the first buildings, the building of Kiev um, bus station that was shown here and that is present in the book, uh, it was the first modernist building in Kiev, and it was complete in 1959, 1960. And uh, that's why it's very important to uh, not just copy the commonly recognized days, but to analyze uh, the regional and local uh, trends. So I would, st if I speak about Ukrainian socialist modernism, I would start that with 1958, or I know that Pavlo has uh, another opinion that 1957, but definitely not 1955, because we have our local trends and uh, specific dates. That's why it's very important to look at uh, the history of architecture with your own eyes and be independent from another research that can be justified for some specific local um, dates. Because I, uh, I would not debate the dates for Moscow, but I would debate them for Ukraine. That's why it's very important not to have Moscow's centralized view, but to have uh, independent view and based on your own data and your own research. And I hope maybe I have some last uh, phrase to, to finish and to summarize everything, that I hope that someday we will have an ability to make such kind of presentation where we would be in equal circumstances. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much for this um, comment or for this um, summarizing. Uh, uh, the whole because I think you you started that it is incomparable and in inappropriate to discuss it, but I think and it was very productive and I think it was very productive because of the conclusion you you made to think about not about the dates of uh, of the thirties and of fifty five and of the speeches and of things, but to see the real life what kind of heritage has survived and what is the reason and what are of course also the differences and to uh, reflect this so it was uh, i think it was for us all of us uh, it was in a short term it was the result of this discussion and, and i'm really very uh, glad that it was possible because it started a little bit um, tremendous <laughs> and uh, complicated but i i see it was worth to discuss it uh, because of this conclusion so I, I have to finalize it. We, you have the possibility to ask the main author and all the statement givers uh, with a glass of wine or something with a small snack uh, outside. We are invited by the uh, Max Lindner Foundation, which is not yet longer represented here. I think Thomas Ill uh, <laughs> is, is ill, Thomas Blill. Um, and hmm? He is uh, bringing the book about Russia, maybe, if it was, was missed here. Um, and I would like to cordially ask you and invite you tomorrow at 9 o'clock, not at 10 o'clock as it was written in the internet, at 9 o'clock we will start at Café, uh, not at Café Moscow, not at Café Kiev, but on the opposite side of Café Kiev, which is Kino International, we will start with the bus uh, to Cottbus and there we will be guided by the BTU, by the Brandenburg Technical University and by the students and uh, the Professor Blocker. Uh, we will have a visit of the university, of the town and of, of the town hall, which are mentioned in the German 
um, album on so-called socialist modernist uh, architecture and then we will come back and tomorrow in the evening we will have the presentation of the German book and we will discuss it and I hope that we can also include other aspects from other countries in this final discussion and not only to discuss about the form uh, this album. So thank you very much for, for coming. Thank you very much uh, for your comments. Thank you very much to Ms. Helmut and John Ziesema for the support and for preparing, for continuing it, and Mr. Buchin for the sound and for the presentation here. Um, uh, I, I think it is, it's rather complicated and I hope that tomorrow we, we improve. Every evening we improve a little bit so we have, um, it's a growing and si self-optimizing system we are trying here. So we will meet tomorrow and I'm looking forward to see you again. Thank you very much. <laughs>